Before we begin this podcast, we're pleased to announce that for this season, the 1878 FM podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport Pubs, where football is more than a game. Green King Sport venues are showing every single televised Everton game over the 23 and 24 season. And with more than 900 sports pubs across the UK, it doesn't matter where you're based, you will still be able to catch every minute of the action. Keep an eye out during the season for events, offers, content and competitions that will put you closer to the action. The Premier League returns this weekend uh, on TNT and Sky Sports and you can check that out in your local Green King Sport pub. Right, without further ado, let's get on with the podcast. Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. There is Series 2, Episode 3. Mm. There you go. It, I mean, it's a very, it's a different like weak, but yeah. results wise is it is exactly the same outcome. Mm. Mm. Um Everton nil Wolves won. A game Everton should have won. Mm. A game Everton dominated. A game Absolutely. Everton missed open goals. And the opposition broke and had one real chance and scored it. And we're all sat here reflecting again. Feels very familiar to other episodes within the series, doesn't it? <laughs> It you know, does. Do you know, like when, uh, like American TV used to make loads of like twenty-two episodes uh, series. Mm. So you'd get like you know an episode of Friends where you know some fella from out of town would come in yeah. and shock Monica because they had had a relationship and yeah. but oh. she doesn't really want a relationship. Yeah. Really. And that had happened maybe like three times a season. Yeah, it, it's this. You know, it's like this again. It's just, it's just a different fella. Different fella. It happens fella. more frequently. Than three it's times. normally like you know they bring in like a Brad Pitt. To, all, yeah. to mix it up, to make it like, well, it's Brad Pitt, he's in Friends, and it doesn't matter if it's the same storyline we had last week. Yeah, You know, Ross is still, you know, he's wallowing over Rachel and all mm-hmm. that, but, you know, Brad Pitt's here. Well, Wolves were very, think, much, very much Brad Pitt. Do you think that people who watch this and listen on a weekly basis, mm. of which there are millions? Of yes, course. of course. You know, do you think they like the familiarity that we bring? You know, they know what they're going to get to, to a certain extent, as you've just highlighted. Mm. You know, there is a... There is a style, there is a brand, there mm. is a tone, you know, which does come out every week. And I think that's maybe a comfy place for people. I think so. I mean, I do think those people would also like to experience us happy on a regular mm. basis joy as well. Would be nice. Joy, bringing joy would be, would be a, you know, would be a lovely thing to be able to do. But um, uh, that's listen. just not the theme of our... No, but it's show, yeah, but it's not it? intentional. No, the show, Everton, the show. That's just not the theme. No, not it's Everton, just not the, the show. Theme. No. We've we've gone through the you know the the comedy years of it, and now we're on to like the mystery and the, suspense of it. Mm. Ooh, will Everton get beat this week? Mm. Ooh, stay that tuned to change. find out. Could change. It, it could change in a. Hey, it can change hey, in hey. a better. You I, just know. I just had a thought though. Actually, you just given us an idea. Now, as, as a general rule. I, I don't like musicals or the theatre as, as a whole for the most okay. part. However, do you think that maybe between us we should actually write Everton the musical? Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, there could be some there could be some humour to come from these particularly mm. tough and torturous times. Mm. But maybe, you know, we could actually write it as a musical and we'd obviously mm. have some someone playing the role of of, you know, Mashiri and, mm. and obviously all the Bill other Bill could characters. play himself, maybe. Uh, well, I, play I was just... Hey, I mean, if only we knew somebody, actually. Dave, that was... Connections to the theatre. That theater was my worry, though. Know, I was just about to say, mm. I don't feel like we'd get a theatre put us in. I think <laughs> I feel like there might be a magical presence be- hiding behind a curtain mm. to stop yeah. us from actually Being hiring out. On. But that could be maybe. part of... It could be very, you know, meta. That could, could be, be like part under- of the could show. Be like an underground show. An underground? Like, well, like in... In the tunnels, let's go to Liverpool Central. Well, not necessarily there, but like one that isn't me, it can't get it, so we have to put it on. So, you know, like the way very much like those, you know, like things like uh, Step Up, them kind of dance films where they, they meet up in the car park and all the, listen, all the no. car, no, all right. So oh, they, have the, they have these things of like, oh, we're having this dance off, yeah, but yeah. it can't be anywhere, and the cars will line up, put the headlights on, mm. and they'll go. And I, maybe it'd have to be like that. We wouldn't actually get a theatre, but we just need a clearing. Yeah, with some lights yeah. and obviously a sound system. Yeah. Very much like Jean Claude Van Damme and AWOL, where he had to have a fight in an empty swimming pool. There you go. Maybe yeah. like that. You know, you've just got to you've got to take your opportunity when it comes. Birchwood Services, maybe. Might maybe. Hey, From with Birchwood Services, you you can you'd have to go eastbound. Like it's I mean, the yeah. why isn't the one on the way? Yeah, yeah. Know, you're we across we a bridge. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's the problem. Not easy is access. Charnock Richard. Charnock mm. Richard. Easy access. Yeah. yeah. Get yeah. there. 
very much niche. <laughs> Obviously, isn't this what happened to the Aston Villa coach when they went to Burnley? It might be, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Let's listen. There was a there was a game at the weekend. I know we've we've started trying to avoid talking about it, and that's sometimes that is the best tactic mm. to adopt. Um, before we get into it, we are obviously a man shy again this week. Mr. Bush is again pulled out. Um, Can I just stop you for a minute? Yeah. How are we going to play this, by the way? Because I get the feeling now that actually Bush isn't going to be a regular fixture for this mm. season. Therefore, sort of excusing his well, um, his his absence every yeah, week. Yeah, I think I think we have to regard it as being that. Bush will just make the odd cameo performance yeah. when he can. I think do as a special guest, a bit like Brad Pitt in Friends. Yeah, very, very much, much again. So, very much so. You see, I was thinking. Full circle. I mean, because it's it is the start of this podcast. It's very much Everton based. Yeah. I almost feel like we are following in the footsteps of Everton for so long. Whereas we haven't had the strike and there's been no backup. We're kind of doing yeah. it. So you know, we maybe we should now get our recruitment team yeah. onto someone who we can bring yeah. in. There's not so much I've, back I've, up. I'll be honest, Reliable. Dave. There is some. We have, no, had, a, we have had talk. We've had a preliminary conversation, we've had, we've Dave. Had, we've to be talk. honest, really, oh, about, yeah. about possible changes to this playing squad. Well, just an addition. Just someone who can come off the bench. Yeah, okay. essentially, very regularly. I mean, very regularly. Do you, do, you, do you have somebody whose name you can share? I, I think we'll leave that. I think those discussions may be better for off air. We air. wouldn't want to build it up no. very much again, like like that, Brad Pitt yeah. or, or any other guests. Or, or indeed Che Adams. You know mm. that that kind of thing. We we mm. very much want to be doing our business in the background, mm, but sure. but we we could maybe we will we will bring you up to speed on that, mm. Dave. Once we, I are mean, we have up. to tell that person first. We would. Yeah, you mean, that would be that helpful. person's not being asked, by the way. We just he's just come to mind. Us, <laughs> she could be a she. You never know. Um, it's but realistically, it won't. It won't be a she. No, it'll be it'll be a, a male, um, or whatever he identifies as. So. A comedian. But Andy, but a comedian, he is a comedian, to be fair. Uh, Andy Bush isn't here, but he has sent us his thoughts by way of the interweb video messaging. So here he is. Hey, fellas, it's Bush. How are you doing? Uh, sorry I can't be with you for this episode. Uh, just on my way into work. I'm looking like Bear grills because uh, we've got no water in the house because we have some work done on the kitchen. So we've gone full beard and backpack. Might start living in the woods or something. Okay, my take on the Everton situation... I'm going to be quite positive about it. If you look at those three games, the amount of chances we've created, but frustratingly not scored, I genuinely feel like we're one beto shaped piece of the puzzle away from, you know, being all right. And that's all it takes is fine margins, you know, goal scoring in the Premier League, isn't it? So, I don't know, I think we're nearly there. I know it's really, like, frustrating and it just seems to go on forever, but I feel like we're nearly there. Still got a lot of injuries and stuff as well. I feel like we're going to be okay. Um, but I, I feel like this team this is terrible to say at the start of the season but I feel like this team's worse than us that we can get away with this season whilst we kind of re convalesce and rebuild but that doesn't absolve you know the board from just being absolute idiots and jokers and stuff like that as well and it's hugely frustrating but I am I'm looking on the positive side of things thanks Bush there you go top man they're walking along very Bear grills, as he said he does look like he, he mm. wants to live in a forest is Bear grills m- code for Trump well Bear grills. When I, last time I seen Bear Grylls, he was on diet of a CEO. He didn't look like a tram, he didn't have a beard. He was very, his hair was brushed. He had even no, he was clean shaven. So it's Bush saying Bear Grylls when he's in the wild. But when I seen yeah. him in the wild with Barack Obama that time, he was clean shaven. Yeah, he was actually. Mm-hmm. I remember that as well. Mm-hmm. Because he's actually, for somebody who spends so much time away from, you know, regular yeah. bathroom facilities, absolutely. Bear Grylls always looks very well. Presented, I think. Yeah, I, not yeah. the sort of wild man mm. that perhaps Bush is angling for. Is no. Almost like it's a setup. Yeah. I don't know whether I don't know whether it's a setup, but maybe a bit. Pro- I like to look at Bear Grylls. I like to see myself in Bear Grylls. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You'd like to see yourself no, in Bear no, Grylls. No, no, that I knew you were going to go there with that. I knew that that was the easy tapping that Everton still would have missed, yeah. by the way. But I knew because. My idea of camping would be very much like, I think, Bear Grylls' idea of camping is now, which is set you lot up with the tent and I'm going to the hotel, but I'll be back in the morning to have a go at you. That would be my kind of camping. Do you know Bear Grylls lives off a little island off Abersoch? He does. There you go. He does. Is that the one that's going to be underwater in 10 years? Not that one, is it? I don't know. Just a busted party. (laughs) 
Loads of women with three breasts. Come on, Dave, you're a DJ. Oh, come yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah, come yeah, on. Right. Come Spell on. up the radio. That, that's, come your, on. that's your that's, that's your literally your niche. That's your age. I know. I've been to the year three thousand. You have. You have. You must um, have met Busted a couple of times, Dave. I have met. Uh, I've met Busted. I've met McFly. I've met Muck Busted, the obviously <laughs> collaborative supergroup. Exactly. So I've met them all individually and indeed collectively, and Top. they are very very nice chaps. Excellent. And Charlie won the, the mass singer, didn't he? Charlie did. He did. He yeah. did. Big Charles. Uh, can we just get back to Everton <laughs> just for a minute and then we can do that? Uh, Dave, Andy's seen quite upbeat there, really. You know, he's basically, yeah. what Andy was basically saying was Everton have created a whole host of chances. Mm-hmm. And it, if we get Beto in, Beto in, and at the time of recording, it hasn't been confirmed, although it is all but done. Um, and Everton start putting the ball in the net, they'll be fine. I mean, is that is that your reading of it? Or are you a little bit more downbeat just right now? Well, listen, you know, I mean, you know that, that general upbeat and positivity isn't my forte. But um, I'm actually willing to to go along with, with the joy that Bush is spreading. Okay. Um, to an extent, because, yeah, I can see that, that mm. situation. I mean, you know, we said this after the first game, after the Fulham game, is that on the positives, they were creating chances and mm. they continue to create chances. So, you know, the, the law of averages, if that's the right expression, would suggest mm. that, you know, goals have to start getting converted soon. Um, you know, from what I've seen of, of Beto, he looks he looks a good player. You know, mm. he's strong. He's, he's, he's got good feet. Mm. Um you know, he's going to make a real new... In, in terms of the goals that I've seen him score during his career, he looks like the sort of player that will be able to handle the the, the Premier League yeah, yeah. and will make a nuisance of himself. You know, and if we can actually, you know, service him, mm-hmm. um, then he should he should score goals. And and so to Bush's point, yeah, you start putting some in the back of the net from all of these chances that you created, then obviously it's a different game and goals win football matches and then we wouldn't be sitting at the bottom with no points and no goals. But... Um, yeah, let's just see. Let's try and stay positive because mm. I'm I'm getting to the point now where I can't just be this flat every every no. week. You know, I don't think it's I don't think it's healthy for anybody. No, you know, um, individually or us or the club as a whole. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just got to start changing soon, and, and we've just got to dearly hope that it does. And um, you know, the addition of some firepower will will make a difference. We shall see. Yeah, I think. Listen, I think I think he, he's right in a way. Um, the problem just right now is that I was saying to you off air, wasn't I? It's because we have been in this. I can't even cut. We've just been in this pit of misery for a couple of years that they do just start merging in. So therefore, it's almost like the next game becomes it becomes a culmination of the past two years. Like on Saturday, I was. I was raging with them, but I was also deeply upset <laughs> because where normally I'm like I'm frustrated or I'm I'm like you a crap, whatever. But mm-hmm. my boy was distraught at the end of the game, like mm-hmm. devastated. And I've never seen him like that. You know, he's watched he's been a season ticket holder for enough years now to know Everton are very good. Yeah, yeah. But he was it's Saturday affected him because I think it's that thing of like you come away from Fulham and you go we had that loads of chances and all right, we're devastated we lost but you know what they will go in you don't have two games like that it doesn't happen in a season yeah. and we just had back to back home games yeah. where it's happened and so I was angry with Evan for making him feel like that you know what I mean because it, it is a case of like passing up so many good opportunities it's nonsense it's almost like we make the most basic things seem difficult. And I, how, I, how did you I feel? think Andy there has shown a classic trait of not going to Goodison very often. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think and being what, a bit removed yeah, from, and like, being a little bit removed is, from it, which is which is that, good that, because that, sometimes you get clarity that way. That's don't you? fine. Um, it's just that when you when you're in it every week and, yeah. and you live and breathe it, and when you've got to see your, your lad, uh, you know. Look, you know, feeling that way, it, it is, and I, I, I do take Andy's points. I yeah, take it. Yeah. It, you know, you, you know, I, I did something last night with the uh, with Chappers on Five Live, and and said sort of the same thing mm. with a striker. We win those games comfortably mm. uh, with a striker. Sorry, but 
but we haven't got a strike. Well, we didn't have a strike yet. Yeah, and again, it's that thing of like you've self sabotaged yourself for the first three games, like you did last. And it's a, it's just a bigger symptom, isn't it? Yeah. And it's like, yes, we can get a strike in, but can we fix that symptom? Well, yes, because winning games, scoring goals, winning games, Fix that gives you that gives you the time to start fixing things behind yeah. the scenes. So, or we could, listen. We've had two home games where we should have really got six points. I think. Yeah. Where yes, we're at the bottom. We're not. Obviously, after three games, we're not certainly not cut adrift. Mm-hmm. But but Saturday is a huge game now, and it's a huge game for the simple fact is if we were to lose, then again for that two weeks we are again the crisis club. Yeah. The international break. Sean, lot people will start looking at Sean Dyke. People mm-hmm. will start looking at the club. And what happens when people look at the club is the club can become very uh, reactionary as well. Mm. So it's it, it creates this really negative at- uh, atmosphere mm. and we have to wait for the next game then and, and tough, tougher games are coming, obviously. Won't people say, or Sean Dites as well, they'll probably say this, and I did say this on Saturday, by the way, even mm. in the, the depths of despair, I did say I expect it to get better in a few weeks. Once Dwight McNeil's fit and, and all the yeah, indications yeah. are he'll be fit mm-hmm. after a break, Apparently, Jack Harrison, they're looking at being fit after the international break. Dominic Calvert-Lewin does talk. He may even be fit this weekend and be in the squad. If Beto's rubber-stamped, which we expect it to be, he'll be in the squad this weekend at Sheffield United. Things like that, Dave, all of a sudden, there's firepower there. Everton apparently still looking at a right winger as well. All of a sudden, you look and go, well, them players actually have got goals in them and make the team better, and they're going to be available again. After this break, yeah, you, I, you know that that way of looking at it. I don't, I, I don't dispute that, and mm. you know, yes, that's a that's a positive way of looking at it, and that's yeah. why what you know we have to focus upon. Mm. But to go back to a point that Ped made, mm. an area that he was talking about, and you know, forgive me for I'm going to bring the mood down here. Like, forget about <laughs> positivity for a minute. Go on. How on earth are we in a situation? You know, and I can only, I don't know Kevin Thelwell, but, you know, obviously we know what his role is at, at the club and, and therefore he's got to shoulder the responsibility and the blame as far as I'm concerned. Mm. It's what you said before, Ped, in so much as, you know, the lack of recruitment in terms of we've effectively given away three games now because we haven't had anybody who can actually score a goal up there. What mm. earth is going on in so much as, you know, and again, sorry for, for sound like a broken record, but we we talked about this. We talked about this, you know, at the end of last season. We talked about it in January. We talked about it the August before that, mm. you know, and we, we've all known. So how on earth did, did they or the powers that be think that they were rightly prepared for a new season, right? still with no with no real firepower up front and then surprise surprise we don't score goals and people like oh do you know what maybe we should start looking for a striker it's like it's fucking obvious and has been for so long you know but do you see what i mean it's it's almost like they've only just realized think about oh because we didn't beat fulham oh because we didn't do this oh maybe we should start looking at some strikers should we have a sniff around you know danny ings should we try and get beto in should we get whoever in no you should have fucking done it a year ago the thing about it, Dave is right, and you're well. It's you know the anger is you know how I feel generally all the time. Um, is Beto? Everton have been looking at Beto since at least January. It was August, like, like, like late August. They've been last looking year. at him, mm. and and this is what I can't like square up is, and I know there's financial problems, and I know the same money comes in at different times and all this, but how can you chase us? How can you be after a striker, and then why why make the decision to go for him? After three games, I know yeah. Everton won them. Everton have wanted them, but why is that decision being made in terms of like? Well, it was after two, one. He, he... No, but why now though? This no, is what no. I'm saying. Yeah. Why now? Yeah. Why? All right, they went for Triore. They've gone for Che Adams. Mm. They've gone back in for Beto. What changed? Like, mm. did did something free up at the football club? Did a direct debit get paid? You know, did did you know what I mean? Is the catalogue being paid off think, or something? Oh, what's yeah. what's changed yeah. to allow this transfer to mm. go through? Well, I said to and you, that, that's what I find well, strange. Th- what's coming out is we don't have to pay for them till next summer. That's what's coming out. So, so is that? So that's that either like, Rude and Asia yeah. have moved. Yeah. Everton have you just like you've just rightly said, Everton had identified them in August, but they went for them the minute they got some money in in January. And they went for him three hours before the window shut. So Udinese were never, ever going to sell their, their big striker, top goal scorer, three hours before the window shut. Yeah, yeah. It was never happening. 
and Everton have been interested in the whole thing. They went for him early in the summer. The terms of payment, the pozos, they couldn't get it done. They moved away from him. So I can only think, without any other information, that the Udinese have budged on what they want. But you're absolutely right. Regardless of that, you're absolutely right, Dave. We said this. <laughs> we talked before the January transfer window when Frank Lampard was still in charge. I know. And we were saying we need to strike it in. And Everton, don't please don't do what you did a year before, which is sack your manager a week before the window shuts and then scramble around. Lo and behold, Everton sacked the manager three weeks be- you know, three weeks into a January transfer window. They get Sean Dyche in a day before the window shuts mm. and then they scramble around. They'd got Lampard in the year before on deadline day, if yeah. we remember. On deadline yeah, yeah. day, you bring a manager in. So the striker thing doesn't surprise me. What does surprise me is why they didn't look for... Everton are great at getting loans. So why didn't he get... If it was a case of, like, yeah. we need some cash up front, why didn't he get a... I'm sure someone would have loaned them something for two months if they could this have... This criminal them. negligence, Barry. You mm. know, it's like there's no other way of looking at it. This is their job. Mm. This is a business. This is their job to make this business as successful as it can be, and this is yeah, all part yeah. of it. And for so long now, mm. they haven't been doing their job. You know, and I'm sorry to point fingers, but I can't think of anybody else who's more responsible uh, for this situation currently than Thelwell. Well, the board as a whole, obviously. Mm. But, Maybe you know, that's his job. Dave, I've I, I've been critical of our recruitment team just from the targets they've gone for. But what if, and I am playing devil's advocate here, but what if they have got stuff lined up and we just haven't got the money to do it? Then that comes back surely to the owner. I see. I can't. No, I, no, I don't no, disagree. That's also, that's also criminal negligence. Yeah, the you owner know, for me. Look at it. The, the whole, owner the whole, is the one. The whole mess is criminal negligence. As you yeah, say. absolutely, you know, absolutely. The fact that 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 a football club, the size of ours, is in a financial predicament where it can't compete. We've or got even a, scraps. We've got a billionaire owner who's an accountant. Yeah. And yet we've we've got money. I mean that, that that doesn't even compute, does it? It doesn't even compute that you your your owner is an accountant and your accounts are so bad. That to me is just like it's like having a bleeding builder who, no, who owns mean, a it, building. It is company. and it isn't, is it? No, we, it is. It is no, 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 no. It is and it isn't. It's the simple fact is, it's not really his money. So it okay. No, but, you know, no. Yeah, what I mean, you no. would have thought, even if yeah, if I'm if I'm. If I'm minding your money, mm. but and but I there know... there isn't any money, though. There clearly isn't any money left. No, there no, but I'm just saying happened. where we are, we're talking about. Yeah, Forget yeah. about whether he can he can go and phone his big mate up. Yeah, yeah. And say, hello, Alice, or whatever, mm. and get the money. It's the of the assets, isn't that's it? it? That's it. The money's, still, the money's yeah. still there, but he's not allowed to play. Well, that's no, that's I mean. it. It's right. a political situation. But what I'm saying is it, he should never have allowed it to get to him. No, no, You're but, absolutely you know, right. The simple fact but is, is that they ran the club with 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 no regard for they just for, thought they because have they just it on thought this slush fund was coming Continue, in every yeah, yeah. every month yeah. and then the minute it was cut off by covid and then by what's happened mm. they've gone oh god this club does not make any money yeah, so therefore yeah. what are we going to do yeah. now instead yeah. of think instead of getting that house in order first mm. like other clubs have done and then going well that's great and we've got the extra little money as well and they've done it all back to front. They've mm. been, and you know, dude, and that's it, isn't it? Really, it doesn't doesn't really take too much explaining. It's just no. that the guy might be a good accountant, but he's not. He doesn't understand how to run a football club, mm. and it's got us to this situation. And they're having to do a lot of deals back to front mm. because we've got to just we fight are. our way out. Yeah. Here, haven't we? Dave, we've got a uh, obviously. There's a there's a cup game this week as well. We're playing mm. we're playing Doncaster, who are bottom of yeah. the entire football league. And, or League Two, um, and this this is already set up beautifully. <laughs> it's on, it's live, so you know, know there's a giant know, killing. Big stage that everybody <laughs> can watch. A potential huge yeah. humiliation, but we then send our already rock bottom situation into an even more laughable predicament. Mm. But this represents an opportunity for Everton to go and put a few goals past Doncaster and, and kick start the season, and maybe yeah. get a little shot in the arm of of oh yeah, we can actually put the ball in the back of the net. That all being said, would you give Yusuf Chimiti a start? He came on for half an hour the weekend. I thought he'd done all right for a young lad coming on. Mm-hmm. Would you start him tomorrow? Because obviously, I don't think Dom's not going to be fit. Mopai, they're looking to get out the door on Friday. Personally, I'd, I'd give the lad at least an hour tomorrow. Why night. not? 
you know, mm. absolutely. Why not? Is a you know the, the the bottom line is that he needs he needs minutes. Mm. You know, he mm. needs game time, and and uh, and this is a perfect opportunity. Mm. I would suggest to actually get that and give him some time and and more time with the squad, and hopefully, you know, something that's going to build his confidence. Yeah, it can only be a good thing, and this would be the ideal time. But as you say, playing someone who are in Doncaster's predicament mm. um, would also sort of steer itself very nicely into Everton the musical. It would, to be fair, it would. Ted, how strong would you go as the, as the, the manager tomorrow night? Um, 50-50. I think, yeah. I think Godfrey, uh, Michalenko, Chimiti would start for me. Mm. I think uh, James Garner would start in centre midfield instead of Jessica Garner Gay. Yeah. Uh, and then put Dobbin on the right, maybe, and Dan Juma on the left, and then... Yeah, I think that would be how I would yeah. I would work, and yeah, maybe put Virginia in goal. Branthwaite has to play again. Yeah, yeah, Branthwaite's let him just, got to play. And let him just play. get some more minutes. He's got to play. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Michalenko needs to play for the fitness. Yeah, obviously Ashley Young, uh, just at Ghana Gate, you know they shouldn't be playing to, no. to like obviously a midweek game. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I go like that. So. Uh, relatively I strong. I wouldn't go yeah. like obviously. I know people might say yeah, throw Tom Cannon in and stuff like that. No, I'd. I'd I'd, I'd go. Chim- Chim- Town Cannon's going to go out on loan, so yeah, Chimiti's yeah. the player who needs game time. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'd go with. And we should have, you know, let's all joke on the side, and we've we've done it before, and it's all a cup game, and there's a banana skin. Ev- ev- whatever team he puts out tomorrow should be good enough to put three or four past Doncaster. Really, you hope so, wouldn't you? Yeah. And and actually, if it isn't, then the situation is worse than we suspected. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Andy. Had a couple of questions for us mm-hmm. as well. So let's have a little look at them. Um, question wise, for you guys in my absence, first question is a bit of an Everton one. If you could kind of go back in time and pluck out a long since retired Everton player from the past or you remember from your childhood and drop them into our team now, who would you go for? For me, Tommy Graveson. Every time, it's just what we need right now. Uh, and then secondly, Secondly, now what would my second question be? Um, uh, let me think. Second, I know, all right, second question. If you could break a world record for eating one thing, like the most of one thing, like for example, I, I think that I could eat um, uh, McDonald's cheeseburgers non stop. Uh, I only stop eating McDonald's cheeseburgers out of politeness to other people, but I don't think there's any limit on how many I could eat. So if there's a, um, if there's a thing you could eat non stop, and probably get into the Guinness Book of Records, what would it be? Right, let's deal with the first one, because it's still Everton related, so we'll tag it on to the end of the Everton thing. Okay. Dave, we're coming to you first. If you yep. could drop any Everton player who's retired mm-hmm. into this Everton team, can be from whenever. Yep. Uh, but I, I think the caveat should be we've we've got to have seen them play, so it, mm-hmm. it's no point going Dixie Dean or Alan yeah, yeah, Ball yeah, yeah. or whatever. Okay. Who would you drop in that you think would make a difference into this Everton team right now? Tim Cahill. Oof. Okay. Easy. Do you know what? Somebody yeah. who has got that passion that, you know, literally to to drag a situation by the scruff of the neck mm. um, and also had goals in him as well. Mm. Um, I think he's exactly the sort of influence that we need uh, physically, mentally, everything about him. I just think that he was he was a great character. Was Tim Cahill, you know, from our yeah. our recent past, and I think he's he's the sort of he's the sort of you know character maybe is, but you know what I mean. That's the sort yeah. of character I think that we are missing in that squad, and mm. I think there's somebody who could actually make a real difference to where we are just now. Absolutely, Pat. Who would you go for? I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for Peter Reed. Reed was, was on my mind. That was my other Reed was on my mind. Someone who would just grab hold of this bunch mm. and just drag them, Knock heads just together. drag yeah. them through. Yeah. Get have yeah. load. I mean, you could say other people, and I'm, I'm sure you will. Mm. There's loads of players that you could mention, score goal, but I'd just love someone to just get get hold of them and 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 knock a few heads together and and tell them tell them how it is and and run the game. Yeah, and and he's a great footballer as well. And and yeah, I would lo- love someone like that in our squad. It's great I heard them. Um, you know, I know I know Seamus heard Connor Cody talking on, on I think Ben Foster's and he was saying saying about him and and saying last season about how important it is for for fans and and to drag us through. And Seamus is close to that but Reedy could do it on the pitch as well yeah. middle yeah. of the park yeah. be, be, in, be 
huge for us because we don't have there aren't I mean let's be honest there aren't that many characters like that in football full stop anymore no. but, but it'd be great to have someone like that he was tremendous because we would run the game though as well mm. he was that He's good he'd run. I mean, no. that's how that's that's how important he is for mm. me in terms of Everton's history mm. is that we to this day we've never ever replaced Peter Reid or anybody of his calibre in that mm. position absolutely it's it difficult isn't it because you could go Neville mm. Southall and all and obviously all of them um, up to Lukaku. Well, he's not retired, so go a bit early, but you cube, you know, them type of thing. Yeah. Um, Kinshelskis, what a player. He'd make a massive difference. But I'm going to just go for probably the... I'm going to go for Gary Lineker. Clearly obvious that you were going to go for Gary but just, You know why? Be, just <laughs> because he was unbelievable. Yeah, he was unbelievable, and I, I think yeah, I read absolutely. Yeah. He was what he was on my mind. I'm not going to say the same as you, Tim Cale. I love Tim Cale, love him. He's probably one of the the very few Everton players I've loved with Pina. I love Stephen Pina. He'd make a big Leighton Baines, but Lineker, he just created. He, he will just get us out of so much trouble. Give him the chance, goal. We win the game or two or three. It's game over. And, and he'd just eradicate all... If Lineker, we had Lineker against Fulham and Wolves, games would be done no, at no. half three, the both yeah, of them. Yeah. And you'd just go, right, we can chill now. And everyone else you can muddle by. Reid is probably the one, because I think he he used to orchestrate a game for Everton. He'd just win a game I think all from three, midfield. I think all three in their own way, what, what makes them so uh, critical is... None of them were scared of big games. No, Tim Cale was like Trained not every scared big of game. going to Anfield yeah. or going to Old yeah. Trafford. Yeah. And there's very few. There's, there's, Chelsea, really, there's really good it. players who 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 fear that. Mm. But he stood up and he, he stood up and be. Ca- well, you just said there, which is amazing, because Romelu Lukaku was unbelievable for Everton, mm. but he didn't Remember turn up in big missing, games no. yeah. for us. He was a he was the perfect flat track bully almost. Rom, mm. whereas Cale. Did absolutely and that's why he probably up. failed at big clubs because they have big, big games, games all the time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm Reed but saying up all the time whether his leg was hanging off or yeah. whatever. Mm. And Lineker just was a goal machine. Yeah. 40 goals in a season. He just went missing at Oxford. He did. He had a nightmare <laughs> in, the, in the one game we needed and we had an absolute <laughs> mare. In. But there you go. And that was a good question yeah. from, uh, from Andy Bush. His second one there's obviously a random one. We yeah. love the rant. This is what this podcast is based on, nearly. Bit of bit of pain at the I'll start. Be honest, I didn't think this podcast was based on anything. Well, no, it's a bit of pain at the start. <laughs> and then it's as random as we can get going through it. So Andy's second question yeah. was, if you could break a world record by yeah, eating yeah. one type of food, which do you... Which would you go for? Like Andy himself would go for cheese, McDonald's cheeseburgers, yeah, yeah. he says. Other cheeseburgers are available, obviously. Mm. But he would go for that. He just loved to do that. And he said he only mm. stops eating them out of giving other people the opportunity to eat them, suggesting he could literally sit there all day and eat them. Yeah. So if you were, Dave, do you want to go first or do you want to ruminate on this and let Peg go first? You know, what do you think? Well, I think where i'm struggling with this mm. is the fact that i do i do agree with bush okay. so strongly and actually right. there's not many there's not many things that i could literally just eat over and over again but okay. weirdly the mcdonald's cheeseburger yeah. is one of those i mean literally i could eat four of those mm. without even trying yeah. really you know, easily maybe even five easily yeah, you know literally mm. in one go yeah, yeah. because they they're just good um, you know, <laughs> I've got a line. So, that should be good. on the poster. They're, they're, just, they're just good. They're just good. Um, and so, yeah, I totally, I totally support that argument. Okay. Um, and and if you know, if we're talking about a numbers game, which clearly we are, in order to break a record, then mm. it's difficult to see past that. I'm just trying to think of something else which would be something you could eat in large numbers. Mm. See, I'm um, struggling because you know that. I'm not great at eating, am I? Like, Does it have to like be eating? Big. Does it have to be eating something? Well, what would it be? No, well, that, that was his question. It wasn't if you could break a yeah. world record, what would it okay. be? It was food okay. related. Keep okay. that for other, keep your part that's right for other episodes when we're struggling for content. Do you, um, know, do you know what I'm going to say then? Content. If you're going if you're going to push me on it, and if mm. it isn't going to be a numbers thing, then yeah. it's got to be something else which I can eat in volume. Go on. And, and for that, I'm going to say... You say Pringles, aren't you? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Once you well, pop. that would be a good one because mm. obviously you can get a lot. I was going to say uh, milk chocolate digestives. Ooh. I could eat a lot of those. I mean, I could literally eat a whole packet of those without mm. even trying. Tremendous um, stuff. So 
maybe i'd still you know given the choice i'd still rather go down the cheese but okay mm-hmm. but um yeah. if you have to push me on something different i'm going to say milk chocolate digesters chocolate digester okay yeah. final answer he's got he's locked yeah. it in they've locked, yeah, locked him in locked mm. it. The cheeseburger okay. one is is they are there's something in them there's some something it's in the onions. Do you know what it is? It's the onion, the little the little fine yeah. onions. There's something well, in them that just I don't know, it might be mm. something illegal. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, you can just you can just eat and eat and eat them. It's mad. Yeah. It is so weird. Maybe they just show taste. They like turn something off in your brain. There's something in it that turns something that thing in your brain. You might just like that it. That tells you you're full. Honestly, okay. I'm telling you now. Go on then. Um, I'm gonna go for. Might be a controversial one, this. Colin the Caterpillars. Okay. I think So I could, you'd like to hold the record for eating the most, I just Colin. think I could eat endless amounts of Colin the Caterpillars. Really? Oh, endless. You mm. see, I, I, I struggle a bit with... I'm not really a cake person as such. I do like a Colin the Caterpillar as far as birthday cakes go, but I don't mm. think I could eat very much without starting mm. to feel sick. Mm. Mm. It's an, it, I mean, it's a tough one. I've got obviously mm-hmm. the the balloon celebration cake from from M and S is incredible. I could sit there probably eat that on my own. Mm-hmm. That is a good one. But if I, if I was thinking about savoury, I mean, I'm not a pet generally. If we go out, finishes my meal anyway because I'm not great. At that it. was in the old times. The old times you that probably wouldn't times. do it now. Yeah, do that now. No, we're a runner now, so mm-hmm. you're an athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, I would probably go for a zinger burger rather than yeah. the, uh, the chicken, the spiciness. I I mm-hmm. could probably. I, I'm, I don't think you could hold the record, though. No, but I, but no. if I had, if there was one that I could hold the record for, I, it probably would I'd like to think that, that you could eat the Zinger Burger whilst looking up who who had the record. Possibly, I, I could do that. Definitely, mm. I could definitely eat one Zinger Burger, but uh, I don't think that's going to break the record. I mean, that's not. It's not going to be newsworthy. Is no, it? no, Harry, no. Harry eats Zinger Burger on his Finish own. Finish the Zinger Burger. I don't know, though, Dave, because whatever Baz tends to do is newsworthy. He's generally right. got, you know, Carragher or a Neville or a bald housewife somewhere in the vicinity of him when he's eating. You know, the press won't leave him alone. So, sure. um, mm. yeah. So I'm I'll sure... tell you what as well, dairy milk chocolate. Yeah, marvelous! Oh, yeah. marvelous creations! That is it. That is it. That's a that's one marvelous. Food. I think that I think we 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 might have said this before. Mm. Is that I think that the Cadbury's chocolate. And by the way, it sounds like there's a lot of advertising going on. In the <laughs> it does, it's doesn't not it? Intentional. No. We've been talking about McDonald's. We've been talking about Cadbury. Yeah. Anyone about wants to, you know, throw some freebies our way for the, can we do, could absolutely. sit and eat them or, or be or, cold by the time they got to the world. Yeah, to be fair, we'll, we'll happily plug you. <laughs> yeah, plug plug, plug yeah. your product. Yeah plug your product whatever um, what was i gonna say uh oh yeah that was yeah. it so i think that cadbury's chocolate is the finest in the world i mm. think it's actually you know there's certain countries in this in this uh in in this world there is one the world there's certain yeah. countries in the world such as switzerland belgium who mm. claim to be real chocolate countries, yeah yeah right? As, as it were. Yeah. Um, however, I think that we in this country make the best chocolate. And when you look at something like a dairy milk, or I might even go for a fruit and nut, or essentially it's the same source material, mm-hmm. that milk chocolate that Cadbury's do is the finest anywhere. Final answer. Yeah, it's it's, it's absolutely fact. tremendous. It's fact. Fact, just leave it there. Fact. Go full. You, once you say don't, fact, what can fact. people say? Yeah, I mean, don't give me Belgium and Switzerland. I mean, no. their chocolates, by, by comparison for me, is rubbish. Well, they just got, what they do is they just go very much like the way America like to call itself world champions mm, yeah belgium and switzerland they go on and even bits of france because we know what the french can be like at times they go we are chocolatiers and they, they that makes them better than anyone else they think it, it, it's not they do have decent chocolate don't get me wrong you know toblerones very nice yeah. mm. especially bought on boats yeah. very nice but um <laughs> but there you go I mean, sadly, I mean the the, the caveat to all this is Cadbury's is actually owned by an American. No, we know, I know, but it, but it, it's just to dis- is it Nestle now that owns no, it's Cadbury. Kraft, it's Kraft food. isn't it? Kraft. Oh, that was it. Just yeah, to yeah, destroy yeah. your illusion, they the the own New England Patriots. Probably, Kraft. probably. They do Robert Kraft. I just think cheese slices. There's them as well. So do I. Of course, mm, there yeah. is them. Uh, How many cheese slices oh, oh. do you think you could eat? Three, maximum. Three. Really? No, I've never had I them. I don't eat any cheese because it's just that texture. It's that of rubbery the... cheese. Yeah, you see, I, I'm. That has not... to melt. It has to melt on you. I like, like um, I like spicy cheese anyway. Mexicana. That's the kind well, of. That's the kind of cheese. This, this Bit of spice. Kind of like international exotic guy. Know what it is, Dave? Know what it is? It's mm-hmm. it's because of Epcot. It's oh, not it to it do is, with honestly, Epcot. Honestly, if you ever it's if you ever wave if you ever wave a 
food and wine festival brochure in front, oh, front yeah. of Epcot in yeah, front yeah. of bars. I have. He goes Absolutely. weaker than these. I do. Honestly. Absolutely. It's, it's, I'm you, gone. you see a different side of him. Mm, I'm I've, gone. I've never experienced him in 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 Epcot, but I'd love to see that. I'd mm. love to see him. I always feel a like you bounce around on, on your... It. Like like Fred Flintstones when he was bowling. That would mm. be you in Epcot. Just, that probably. just on your twinkle toe. Oh, mate. Go from the country, country to country. To country. Stay, you know, the minute I get into Epcot, I'm a... I'm what's a your favourite country in Epcot? Um... China, I think. Would you ever go to China to see how how, how yeah. they're liked? If they're oh, no, I know. Mm, I don't know. I like Japan as well. Japan's amazing. I go to Japan. Really. Okay, I will go to Japan. Really. Tokyo. What's so good about Japan and Epcot? The drumming in Japan is incredible. The drumming, yeah, the drummers, the yeah. yeah, fair play. Yeah, the tremendous the drummers, and then obviously going to the it's just great. It's great. And the which food. would you say is the most disappointing country for you in, in Epcot? Epcot? Uh, yeah, England. But they have like right. Mary Poppins and, and, and I was running around telling the, the kids. Beatles, but they swear the Beatles not. Yeah, yeah. They have like the, the British invasion or something. Maybe there's a copyright like, thing going possibly, on. Possibly. Mm. Possibly. Mm. But yeah, it's great, great times. Great times. I'm going all I'm going all misty eyed. I was gonna say it's time for you to get back to Fcot There is next year. There is back. I'm going back. See what I did going back. Um I was thinking on the randomness. No all this Mike Dean. We haven't had any randomness no, no, at no all, have we? This has been all focused. So. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Everton focused. But you know, Mike Dean obviously came out and there's been a big thing over VAR. Right? Mm. What thing... Forget, we're not going to go into the Mike Dean stuff. He's a... He's a yeah, he is what he he's is. He's a person. Um, he's a person of interest mm. uh, to a lot of people at the moment. But I was thinking about this. If you could have VAR mm. in your life yeah. for it, for things... yeah. What would you choose it for? So I've like, so I'm thinking like, you know, in ours. So like, yeah. say, might be Sutton Zach said, and then he yeah. denies it, or there's a conversation with your missus or whatever, and you think, I'm gone. But I'd love the opportunity to go to VAR to see if that was said. Like, get the Al in your room, yeah. get it played back, have a look who who was the who made the okay. uh, you know the offence. So if if it isn't for that, what would you like? What would you like in your life for VAR to be used? For? I I think it's, I think we need a near for net at well, times. I mean, you, I mean, you could get. I've got like a camera in one of my rooms in the front room. Down. Yeah, but that'd have to be wired up to you, so I could go to you. So let's show my phone. I could, I so could, can I go to you and go like that, and you'd see me if you want to see if you want to see what my dog's doing in the front. No, room. no, to yeah. you for to give me VAR. Would you act like a Mike Dean in the VAR room? Well, I completely lie to you. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Well, he said it. Um, I'd say the one thing, there's one thing definitely in my, in my house where, and a, can, there's only two of us who live in it and mm. a dog, is when things just mysteriously go missing <laughs> and mm. and one of the people says, I never moved it. And yeah. you know you never moved yeah. it. So unless the dog went and put it somewhere and then the thing mysteriously turns up somewhere and you're like, why did you move that? And it's like, I, I never moved that. Ooh. How well, yeah, that's what I'd want for the AR, the VAR, just for that yeah. decision to see how it was moved. Yeah, there is for a clarity. lot of like, there's a lot of like, just random, you know, th- p- things getting picked up in my house and mm. moved without thinking. So I think for that, I mean, it might be the greatest answer in the world, but that definitely. No, but that's good. That's, 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 a, a, that's a that's a life. That's problem. a light exactly. It's a you life know? issue, yeah. isn't it? You know, VAR will come in handy there. Dave, have you got any any insight onto this? Um, well, we're all kind of saying the same thing, aren't we? In so mm-hmm. much as, you know, we're using VAR in the same way that it's used in football to actually prove a situation which is is not clear and cut and dry. Yeah, clear what and obvious, both, maybe. Mm-hmm. Clear and obvious. What you're both saying is that, um, you know, there are things that happen that you don't fully or wholly believe the story that you're hearing from somebody else mm-hmm. within your household. And if we're going to go down that route, then, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, my 16-year-old daughter lives with me. And uh, and that's joyous at times. Oh yeah, um, but it and, is. And, and certainly, there are certain things when I kind of go, you know, why is that there, or who put that there, or who didn't put that there, or whatever. And then she'll say one thing, and I'm thinking, well, no, I mean, I know, I know what the answer is, but I can't prove it. Mm. Um, and maybe this is where this kind of technology would come in. So I think we're all sort of saying the same yeah. thing, in so much as it's just proof of something whereby we know we're right, but by other people in our lives, we're perhaps told at times that we're wrong. I'd like it as well. You, you, I mean, it'd be interesting to see, like, on the roads, wouldn't it? You know, like a mm. car pulls and like, there's a bit of a thing. You could stop and get out and go to VAR mm. to see you pulled. I think that'd be dead interesting. Just getting out of your car, giving it the old <laughs> VAR thing, going to it, going to Stockley Park or other places are available, and some fella just plays it back and goes, yeah, 
Blue cars pulled out there. You are the uh, the person that's caused the infringements. Therefore, you owe the apology. I think it'd be interesting. It's a bit big brother that, though, isn't it? It is a little bit. Yeah. I get, listen. Listen, yeah. I didn't say it was perfect. I'm just saying, you know. Sinead, you just hit my car. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old one. Well, yeah, you know. It's an old one. Shardy. Shardy. Yeah. What a guy he was, by the way. Craig. The Craig. Did you get into Big Brother Dave when it first came on? And the I Craig was think. on it. This yeah, week, I am nominating... He couldn't say Ka- Caroline. So he said, this week, I am nominating Sharda and Caroline. Called the Caroline as if she'd invented gas fires and just put an iron on the end of it. But uh, what did what did you make of the original Big Brother, Dave? I think the original Big Brother for me was was far and away the best one. Mm-hmm. And, and to an extent, it went downhill after that. But the reason why it was the best one was because of the fact that it was new to them as well as it was new to us. Mm-hmm. So they were kind of exploring and enjoying the social experiment themselves. Mm. And I think what I'm trying to say is that once it got to episodes, series three, four, five, it then became full of people who would just want to be famous. Yeah. And people who would just thought, well, I'm just going to be as outrageous as I can because that's what's going to get me on here. Yeah. I'm going to be the extreme this or the extreme that. And, it just, I don't know, it just, it was a different, there was a different motivation behind people's uh, participation. And I think the first one was good. And Craig Craig Phillips is a, is a, is a lovely fella. Mm. Oh, yeah, we, I mean, me, we've seen him. Me, have we seen Oh, no, I've seen him, sorry. I've seen him in B&Q, buying plasterboard. <laughs> Well, that's, you know... And that's what he did. Bushman's holiday. Bushman's holiday. I mean, th- that first one, when I think... I mean, I did think Series 2 was brilliant. Brian Dowling. It was, it was a brilliant yeah. season. Mm-hmm. But the first... The mad thing about the first one is... Obviously, like you've just said, they, they didn't really know what they were walking into. They went into this place and no, no one even knew what it was. It sounded mad. Mm-hmm. They had all things. They'd done all mad stuff like naked painting and everything and that with like painting with the body oh, yeah. and all this kind of bizarre things. But you'd also had obviously Nasty Nick, which yes. was incredible. I mean, that was the thing that won Craig Phillips' big brother in a, in a sense because a lot of people didn't actually like him. In fact, he got voted. He was like nominated most weeks by different people. Um, and then when he, when he, you know, when he got Nasty Nick, and then um, sat him across a, a very small kitchen table mm. and said, uh, you've been cheating, basically, by telling people what to vote and mm. telling people who to nominate and all of that. You know, mm. and then you'd have Nick going in the diary room and I've made a mistake and all of that mm. kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, nasty Nick Bacon still remember his name and it was 20-odd yeah. years ago. 23 years 20, ago, yeah. Barry. That's the scary thing. It's just actually celebrating his anniversary. Oh, all okay. Time. So it was incredible. And, and and when they'd go each week, they'd walk outside and wave to the family in the first one because the family were literally 10 foot away. And then obviously it, it, it got bigger and bigger and, and they had to like remove them all. And it, and you're right, by like one of the season where one of the girls like, she'll like, go and squat on this wine bottle and things like that. And she did oh, in the that, garden. That was that, that, was that king or what? Kinga. It? You know, and it's like, horror, you're she? looking to for to be absolutely mm-hmm. outrageous now, not mm-hmm. just in here for the... So it did get a bit mad. I, I'll be honest, I ate it. Funny. No, but that's fine. I, I ate but it. But did you ever watch the first I couple? Bit. I, I understand it. as it got on. the reason why I ate yeah, it, go on. because it, it created a form of television that was very, very cheap. And for a while, Tate took over completely. Mm. And it ruined all of the TV because... And this just... I love my TV. Everybody knows that. And it cheapened it and it made it, instead of going out and making quality TV shows, mm. they just made crap after crap after crap after crap. Dead cheap, fly on the wall, rubbish. Oh, let's f- and then you're absolutely both right. Everyone starts playing up to it. So the first, that's why. They the make, first couple were all like another yeah, season. I'll, give you, I'll give you the second series mm. as well. Maybe even the third. Yeah, yeah. Once it got to four and five. Yeah, yeah. Got, you know, when you see all the audition tapes and you see them coming out on that catwalk. And yeah. Like, oh, God. That's why I worry yeah, for yeah. something like The Traitors, which was brilliant, that by the way. Brilliant. I worry Absolutely. for something like that. because, And that's why, I'm, I I mean, I haven't really, I know there's other versions of it, like uh, Australia, America, I haven't really watched it. But I fear for the second one, because you're absolutely yeah. right. Everyone's then, I want to be the one who becomes the star out of this, or mm. I want to be the clever one, without going in and going, I don't. Like in the traitors, like even in the first episode, it was a massive shock. shock. You and then, and then it came back later. And will he be able to get away with things like mm. that? But they so, might change it, might he? See, yeah, they might do. And I hope they, I hope they do. But it, that's it's it, it. It 
it become like cheap and nasty telly, and I hate that. No, like, what what you got? Well, you know, you're right. You're right. It the was first, a social experiment. The first few yeah. seasons were really like, well, I loved it to be honest with you. I really liked it, and then it went terrible for about four. Yeah, we watched it. You'd start watching it because it becomes a habit. Then, or what's happening? And you'd watch it in the night every night. Yeah. And after a bit, you it then it the the extended it so it went on longer than it needed to be. And then I remember the last season on Channel 4 was really good because what they did was they, they obviously had people, but they brought other people back from other seasons and mm-hmm. they messed with it. It was funny, like bits of it were funny. Then I was like, Channel 5 will buy this because <laughs> Channel 5 has got nothing, and it did. And I never watched it. I've never watched it since, ever. Um, and it did change because the people did realise what they were getting into. And that yeah. once once the curtains push back, it, it, it's very difficult to recreate it again. But then you get social media. But you add it with everything. You add it with X Factor. X Factor yeah. in at the start was all right, and then mm-hmm. a few seasons in, you started having them. And I remember, I always remember this was the moment when the, when One Direction were put together. There was just like it was so obviously mm-hmm. like set up every like choice of and I, you'd have been oh, it'd have been better if they'd have just gone we're going to create a boy band out of these five lads and these yeah. are the ones we've picked there was all like this scene with Jay Malik where he wouldn't dance so he went out and there was like 30 lads and sat as if you would be looking Simon Carl's like oh where's the other lad and then he went off to speak to, it was just nonsense and yeah. it was like this is shite now and you're right they have like a little window don't they where they're really good yeah. And then you've yeah. got to end it. And I think hopefully the traitors, they'll have a couple of seasons and then they might go, like, Kill it. we're at it now. But I hope it'll be interesting because that was really good. Mm-hmm. It was. Yeah, I agree. It I was. Really thought it was really good. Right, let's leave it there then because we know that Dave's very, very busy, man. Very, very busy, busy, man. man. So, uh, yeah, this has once again been very random. There was no plan to talk about Big Brother or the traitors. Um, or your love of cheese in Epcot. My love of cheese, the cheese and wine festival, Mex- food and Mexicana wine festival. Cheese. Oh, Mexicana. Beautiful. Beautiful. Try it if you haven't tried it. Mexicana cheese with the chilies. Some bell peppers in there. Very hey, nice. You know, you know, Go you on, know, Dave. Ago, uh, Go on. Years ago, Juliet Farrington, who did the sports on our radio show. Clang. Ago, <laughs> clang. And, uh, anyway, she was she was interviewing Stephen Gerrard for something, and clang. so we decided it'd be, it'd be funny to to uh, to shoehorn in some questions. Yeah, okay. Of One of them was Stephen, what's your favourite cheese? At which he famously replied, um, "Melted cheese." <laughs> and, <laughs> That was his answer. There you, well, to be fair, if that's his favourite cheese. You know, now look at him. Now he's look he's at earning him. gazillions exactly. in, the, in the desert. Hey, know. won a couple of games, so they fair yeah, play. Cause. Yeah, because. They got me last night. Ha, ha, ha. Did they? Mm, yeah, fair play. Fair play. Yeah. Right, let, thanks, Dave, for those lovely <laughs> little tidbits. Nice one. This, uh, make sure you subscribe. Give this if you're listening on things like Spotify and Apple, give it five stars. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Take it easy. See you later. Cheese review.